The Avatar The Last Airbender crossover is now live in Fortnite Chapter 5, and that means all the elemental bending mythics are now live in the game as well. And I'm sure you're wondering, which one is actually the best? Well, it's not quite that simple. Each element actually has its own power set and serves a very unique purpose. So in today's video, I'll be explaining the power set of each one and showing you how to use them correctly. These bending powers are super fun and actually quite meta, and on update day, I got two solo wins with exclusively these powers. So be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss that vid when it comes out but for right now let's start testing we're gonna start with the fire because this is the shotgun of all the powers and it has a sort of burst effect and this is really good at close range because as you can tell it's kind of wide even if they're trying to dodge side to side you'll still still do quite a lot of damage to them it also has a bit of a tricky attack here we can go up in the air and do a sort of AoE effect, and I found this pretty useful. If you're fighting someone and they're directly in front of you, and then you go over them and start hitting them from the back. Though I would say fire is probably the hardest to use because when you're close reigns with a frenzy auto, I'm sure you all know how difficult of a fight that is. Now when we're talking about structure damage, a full combo will definitely destroy a wooden wall. But if we're talking about a fully built stone wall, it's just under 200 health full combo. Now after a bit of testing, I've found that the range on the firebending is actually nine squares. As you can see, I'm not damaging this wooden box, but once I step into the eighth square, bam, we get a hit. So this is really best used at the short range, but really the extreme short range. Next, we have the water bending, which is by far my favorite. It fires a burst of ice shards, and these things are near hit scan. This weapon is pretty much the best rifle type weapon in the game right now, at least unscoped. It also has the benefit of infinite ammo. So if you're in a squad based mode and you guys are running low on ammo, you can definitely just pick this up and you won't have to worry about it. And it also has healing while in water so in my mind this is the best of all the mythics this is the one that people are actually using in competitive formats now when it comes to damaging the walls you can see that it's actually the best it's the fastest and it has more projectiles left after you destroy the wall so you can actually use this as a burst style weapon and people usually do this with burst weapons where they will hit and mid burst they'll switch to take a wall on you. So it's very effective like that. It can essentially replace any rifle or the Thunderburst, even in build mode. And you see you're getting nearly 75 per burst here. So you'll be able to even take down a stone wall with only half a magazine of this. And because of its hit scan nature, you could use it to just greet people from far away Literally just taking down their builds, wasting out their materials. This is one of those items that has a lot of uses and it's good in pretty much any situation. Next we have Earth Bending, which is much less useful in build mode, but definitely very useful in zero build because it has the function of laying down a little fort for you. This is probably less effective than a Porta Bunker, but it is infinite, it's on recharge, though it kind of has a hidden recharge. It's not gonna be on cooldown on your uh, weapon column. And it does take away your old fort when you put the next one down. So be careful not to just be spamming these around. 800 health as well, a decent amount. It'll definitely withstand those fire blasts. It'll have a bit of a harder time against the water bending, but even then, it pieces apart, which is really good. So the whole thing doesn't tumble down. Even if they take down one piece, you can still be taking pokes, be using it to go over and across, which is probably a benefit because the Porta Bunkers have the tires on the outside, making them harder to play parkour on. Now, when I say that it's worse in building, it does have a projectile, but the projectile is much more limited. It immediately goes on to cooldown. It's a single projectile, though it does break the wooden wall. Let's test if it breaks the rock wall. Oh, it does break a rock wall. Wow, that's very powerful. Can the earth bending break a metal wall? No, it does exactly 300, which puts it right at the threshold of the stone. Definitely breaks your traditional wooden wall. At this point in Fortnite, you really should not be building 
defensively or offensively with wood. It should really just be for traversal. It melts pretty much instantly to no matter what projectile you're talking about. Even the fire bending takes down those wooden walls pretty fast. But it's pretty interesting, honestly, that the earth bending has the highest health defense you can put out of anything, including traditional builds. But you're probably not going to be using this too much in build mode. Maybe if you're in a squad and you want someone to knock it down while you replace, that might be a tactic. But I think overall of the projectile based ones, I'm still going to be sticking with the water bending most of all. Now the air bending is definitely more of a movement item. It's cool that the storm's coming after us because I can show you how powerful it is. Okay, that was a jump. If you do the right trigger, you'll enter your wind wheel. And this is, I would compare this to a dirt bike. It replaces the Icarus wings. By the way, all the Greek God powers got removed for the elemental bending powers. And I think this is way better than the Icarus wings because it keeps you close to the floor. While you're in this mode, you can double jump as well, which will get you some height. As you'll notice, there's a stamina bar, which does recharge, but you can essentially stay in this wind wheel infinitely. You're a bit easier to hit. But again, less so than Icarus Wings, and you can actually combine your sprinting with this to go even faster. I don't think most people have caught on to this, so definitely use that to your advantage. It's important to know also that while you're not in the wind wheel, you can still get a double jump. Boom, see? And this is on a silent cooldown as well, similar to your rock wall. It's probably five to 10 seconds, probably closer to 10 seconds. And you'll want to remember this double jump because one of the redeeming features of the Icarus Wings was that it could actually save you from fall damage just by having it out in your hands. And the double jump will save you from that fall. When it comes to ranking these four elemental mythics, I'm gonna have to put water bending at the top. This is the one I've dominated the most with. It's completely replaced my rifle. It's a hit scan god weapon. It gives you the heals in the water. It's competitively viable is the thing I'm saying. Of all of these, it's the most competitively viable. Under that, I'm gonna have to put air bending because air bending as a movement item has replaced the Icarus wings. And while the shockwaves are still king, this is a decent replacement and you can actually use it in end game without getting lasered out of the sky. It also has multiple functions, which uh, improve its utility. Now, even though the earth bending is zero build centric, I would put it as my third favorite, just because the barriers actually have more health than metal. And the stone can be used if you're in duos or squads to get cheeky wall replacements. If you're playing very tactically, this can be a very dominant and surprising weapon. The fire bending is probably the least useful just because it's all attack. There's no real changing it up with it. This is definitely something you're only gonna see in zero build because if you're doing something like this in the middle of a field, you're just gonna get lasered or people are just gonna build over you. And something like this being able to go over someone That'll be good in a shotgun battle, but in the way shotgun battles go in build mode, no bueno. It's definitely not going to work in your favor. But I think the cool thing about all these elemental powers is that they kind of form a full loadout. You have your close range, you have your long range, you have your defense, and you have your movement. So you can actually viably go full avatar state, and I actually do go full avatar state in my next video so i recommend you guys subscribe so you don't miss out on that comment down below your favorite avatar power or skin from this crossover down below and of course use code sourheart in the item shop this video helps you out